Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, capital S. So this is the Holy Spirit. This is God. Into the wilderness. Why? Why would God send Jesus into the wilderness? How many Jews, Hebrews, died in the wilderness of the 40 years? Lost by the dispensation they were in. And will stand at the great white throne judgment and say, Well, how do you know what it was like in the wilderness, Jesus? Because the Holy Spirit sent me there. And we're going to learn that when, 40, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungered. How many times did the Hebrews, We need water, we need food. Can you provide a table for us? And God gave him water. There was, there was a, uh, I think, a lake with palm, 10, 10 or 20 palm trees. And God gave him manna. God gave him quails. God gave him water out of the rock. I went 40 days without food. Like Moses. You know, it wasn't so bad. Okay, the first few times... We ain't got no water, okay. Then, you know, we ain't got food, that's okay. You figure after that, they would say, you know what, we were in this predicament before. We'll just turn to God and he'll meet our needs. But, but we're all human, we're all sinners, we're not like that. So if anybody were to charge Jesus at the great white throne judgment, oh, how long did you not eat for? When the tempter, verse 5, that's the devil, the Bible calls the devil the tempter, our adversary, an accuser. He's our enemy. He tries to get us in trouble. And then he goes up to God and says, see what he did? If thou be the son of God. Now you got to ask yourself a question here. Satan is Lucifer. Lucifer was in heaven. Lucifer saw the Trinity, saw the angels, saw the seraphim. What is Satan doing that are you the son of God? Now he has wisdom. He has knowledge, but I don't think he has understanding. Or is he approaching Jesus like, hey, you know what? Let me just challenge who you are. Now, whatever the case is, Whether Satan knew exactly who Jesus was or he didn't know who Jesus was. If he walks right up to him and says, If thou be the Son of God, and you think he's going to be afraid of you? He'd tear your hide away. The Bible calls him a lion. So, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. We're in the wilderness. There's no food. We want bread. 
How about we need some water from the stone? Come on, God. Forget about the manna. Forget about the water and the rock. You take those stones, you turn them into food for you. That was the entire wilderness journeys of complaining. But he answered, Jesus answered and said, It is written. I've heard smart mouth preachers, oh, smutty faces. The only way you're going to attack the, attack the devil is with scriptures. But beware, he knows the scriptures. He knew the scriptures with Eve. He knows the scriptures with Jesus. It is written, man is talking to Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone. This is out of Deuteronomy. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your diet of physical food is nothing compared to the diet of God's Word. And since that is the first case that Jesus lays in the lap of Satan, ever since Alexandria, Westcott, and Hort, the devil was put into, okay, which word? Now, we've already seen back in Matthew with the Magi, and Herod says, well, where's this Messiah? Where's this king been born? Oh, you know, he's a governor. No, he's a ruler. We don't want to upset the king. We'll lower the standard of Jesus. After all, we know what happens to John the Baptist when he challenges Herod. So the first attack on Satan is the Word of God with the Word of God. Hey, it is written by the Word of God. Then the devil, by the way, if thou be the Son of God, you see that in verse, verse 3. The first time that shows up is in Daniel, where it is attacked by the scholars, where Nebuchadnezzar says he sees four men loose in the fire, and the fourth one is like the Son of God, and they change that G. to small G. Because how on earth would Nebuchadnezzar know about the Son of God? Satan does. Satan knew who was in the fourth man, the fourth man in that fire. He knows who he's dealing with right now. And so he gets his scholars all together to try to take that deity away from him. So the devil takes him up to a holy city. Come on, church, we're going to have tickets, we're going to make it money, we're going to go to the holy city. I wonder who's driving the bus. Because I don't think God would call it holy. Not today. I've had people, would you like to see the holy sea? I said, I'm going to. Oh, when? When Jesus comes back. It won't be a Roman Catholic will show me around. It won't be a Muslim. It won't be an Arab that shows me around. It'll be Jesus. I mean, he taught in Jerusalem. How did like have him come back second heaven? All right, gather around, bride. Let me show you. This is where I... That's the exact spot where I was 13 years old. We opened our Bibles, our KGB Bibles. And set him on the pinnacle, that's like a little tower sphere of the temple. The temple's there. That's important. And said, if thou be the Son of God, there he goes again. You know, Satan tried to put doubt. He showed up to Eve. 
Yea, has God said? God is not the offer of confusion. Cast thyself down, jump. For it's written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. You know what Satan's doing there? He's quoting scripture. Now, but like he did with Eve, he only gives half the picture. Psalms 91. Don't trust Satan when he breaks out his Bible. Don't trust any preacher that breaks out an Alexandrian Bible. I know I've been in the church. So Psalm 91, 11. He says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Satan says, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. Addition. They shall bear thee up in their hands. In their hands they shall bear thee up. Kind of reversal. Least thou dash thy foot against a stone. At any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Oh, notice how stone keeps showing up. Because who's the rock? Yeah, uh -huh. okay. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon, shalt thou trample on thy feet. Where is that in Matthew? Boy, does Satan know where to stop at the period. Because the next verse that he doesn't quote, verse 13, rebellion, is Satan himself. There's a lion. There's the snake. There's the dragon. Revelation 12. As he gets kicked out of heaven. Trampled under feet. Remember Genesis 3.15? The prophecy of the woman in her seed. Notice how Satan left that out. You imagine Jesus sitting there like... <laughs> You done? Because <laughs> you didn't quote it completely. Back to Matthew. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. No, Jesus does not get into a theological debate with Satan. Because he knows the ground of Satan is he's a liar. He's a deceiver. Again, the devil takes him up to a seemingly high mountain. He shows all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now look at cha Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, same story. Verse 5. And the devil takes him up to a high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil says, All this power I give thee, the glory of this, for that is delivered unto me. All the kingdom powers, in some way, shape, or form, are ruled by the devil, including America. And if Satan does something, he needs God's permission. Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. So if there was a stealing of votes, and I don't know and I don't care, well, this shows you who's, who's involved. 
If there's lying, if a politician gets up there and lies, well, it just tells you who you're dealing with, back to Matthew. A moment of time, that that's all Satan has? What's a moment of time? Well, from the time that Adam gave it all up unto when Satan is cast in the lake of fire forever. That's a moment of time. It says, And all these things will I give thee, Matthew 4, 9, if thou will fall down and worship me. That's what Satan wants. And he wants God's son to do it. He wants you to fall down, and he wants you to worship. You know there are people, and this is great where this shows up, because there are people, you don't realize it's covered up, it's hidden. There are people in the governments of the world that have fallen down to Satan. Yes, Lucifer. Yes, Satan. Yes, devil. I will do whatever you want me to do if you will give me this power. Devil's like, yes. The rock bands have said, we have sold ourselves to the devil for power and for fame. Devil's like, yes. Yes. You can sell you, yourself, not your soul if you're saved. A lost person can do it. A saved person can do it. A lot of you, you your, your singers, your average singers that are in the world and singing the worldly music and all that, they come out of a Baptist church where they used to sing for Jesus. And the devil taps on the shoulder and says, hey, you want to look at the golden platinum records? You want to look at the people out there? Ooh, look at you, yay! You signed my autograph! You want? <laughs> and they end up dead with drugs. They end up with, with ruined, divorced wives and, and lives and just and all that. He doesn't tell you that part. And all these kings I'll give you, and like the thing I tell the Jehovah Witnesses, Thomas says, my Lord, my God, Jesus does not rebuke him. Cornelius falls down before Peter to worship him as the Pope, and, Cor and Peter's like, yo, get up! I ain't God. Paul and one of, one of his companions, they're, they're in one of the cities there, and the priest starts bringing garlands. They're going to do a sacrifice. Paul's like, whoa, wait a minute. Stop. I ain't God. When Satan says, hey, listen, I'll give you all this power. I'll, and look, look at the power. I'll give you the whole entire Roman Empire right now. And Jesus does not say, no, you won't. It's mine. Not yet. It ain't yours, Jesus. Hey, imagine Jesus looking at Satan like, okay, yeah, go ahead, but I'll get the victory. And what Satan is doing, and I don't know if he knows he can't, but there's, the, uh, there's that option because Jesus said, I can call down legions of angels. Satan is trying to prevent Jesus going to Calvary. That's what he's trying to do. Right now, if, if the devil can get Jesus to stop going to Calvary, the devil's won. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Devil, verse 8. Satan, verse 10. Revelation 12, he's the dragon. He's the old serpent. For it is written, now watch this, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. The devil ain't gonna ever do that. Now the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came to minister unto him. Okay, we're going to do some flipping. Hold your place here. Look at 1 John. 
Now we're going to look at Satan's toolbox. First John 2.16. Now Satan has a toolbox. He doesn't have American. He doesn't have standard. He doesn't have metric. He, Satan has three tools in his toolbox. And he keeps them clean. He keeps them organized. And he knows where these tools are at all times. And only these three tools and they are made of the best workmanship. He says in 1 John 2, 16, For all the world, I ought to give you a clue, the lust of the flesh, one, the lust of the eyes, two, the pride of life, three, is not of the Father, but of the world. The world passed away, the lust thereof, There'll be no lust in New Jerusalem, but the but he that doeth the will of the will of God abideth forever. So Satan has three tools he uses, and he uses them on Jesus. Back to Matthew. Matthew chapter four. Verse 4. Oh, no, verse 3. Matthew 4 3. If thou be the Son of God, we know he is, command these stones to be made bread. All right, this is lust of the flesh. Are you hungry? And Jesus is hungry. He's a man, and he's God. He's God, and he's a man. He hungers. I, I can just imagine Jesus there. Forty days, no food. Forty days, no food. That was it. Hey, just take those stones there and make them bread. Satisfy your your urges. Go ahead, glutton, eat, feast, get the royal dainty. Get the fancy whatever have you. Have it. That's the lust of the flesh. Verse 6. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down for his written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up for any time thou dash thy foot against them. Hey, you're in charge of the angels. He knows who Jesus is. You're God. You're the Son of God. How about the pride of life? You're in charge of the angels. Command them. Call them down here. Come on, I'll wait. Show. Now listen, there's no one else there but, but Jesus and Satan. That's it. He said, well, who's, who's going to know? God. Have you ever in your lifetime ever ever had a sin happen and somebody come walking in the room, come walking around the corner, what are you doing? Uh -oh. <laughs> Oops. Satan would have had that. So that's the pride of life. Verse 8. And the devil takes him to a seeing high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. That's the lust of the eye. See? Look. Look. That's advertisement. That's the television ads. That's the, the pornography. That's the pretty colored magazine. That's the pretty colored billboard. That's the booby showing. That's the butt showing. That's the big fancy car. That's that woman sitting there. What, what's that woman doing there? She's selling stocks. You don't need a woman there to sell stocks. Yeah, we, you know, we got to get the men. What's that big hunky fire fire there? Because we're trying to get the women. What's what's all the colorful uh, 
characters and, and, and drawings and, 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 and cartoons and all that on the cereal boxes as you're walking down the cereal aisle at the grocery store. That's to get the children. You know? And, and Satan uses this for everybody. Even you look at your sins. I know there's a particular sin in my life, and I, I'll see, uh-huh, yeah, Satan knows that. Satan could right now, I don't know if he has the power, but right now, he could lay out in front of me, right in front of you right now, he could lay out beer, rum, alcohol. I don't remember what they call it. Ice cold. Wine. That ain't gonna do me nothing. And don't, don't open up that can of beer or that bottle of beer. What, are you going to drink it? No, because that stuff smells like piss to me. When I smell beer, it turns my stomach. It ain't going to do nothing for me. Now, there's some sins I'm not going to tell you. And some of them, I got, Lord, I need help. I need help. And there are other things... Like I said, yeah, because I used to drink. I quit drinking in 1990. There's some other sins. So what? <laughs> Who cares? I don't want nothing to do with that. But Satan knows which tool to grab out of the toolbox for you. And he knows what tool to keep, keep it there. I don't need that one. Now, let's go to Genesis 3.16. One verse. One verse verse. Genesis 3.16, talking about Eve. That's not what I want. It's Genesis 3. Genesis 3.6. Ready? One verse. Open up, open up your toolbox, Satan. And when the woman saw the tree was good for for food. Jesus, make those rocks bread. Come on, Eve. What's that fruit going to do for you? I don't care what God says. Satisfy your desire. You know your flesh wants it. You don't think so. Try fasting. Oh, the son, man, you want to eat. Okay. That it was pleasant to the eye. Lust of the eyes. You tell me all the fruits in that garden. I, 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 I guarantee, I think that fruit, I don't know, I don't know if it, if it had a glow or it was just plain and ordinary. I don't know. I know it wasn't. It doesn't say apple. It never says apple. Okay. Here, Jesus. Look at all the kingdoms of the world. A tree to be desired to make one wise. Ah. Uh, Look at the education. Look at the pride. We'll give you a piece of paper and you can hang it on the wall in your bathroom. You graduated from college and you don't have a job. You graduated from college, you take more junk at work. You just get a little more money, but, you know, that extra money, you, you, know, you got to buy the prescription drugs to calm you down and everything. I mean, you got to have medication to go to sleep because you're worried about that contract. you got to have medication to calm you down because your boss is a raving idiot. you got to have medication because you're anxious about that, that, that proposal coming up. Then you gotta have medication to get you up in the morning, because the medication that got you to sleep. <laughs> one verse, look at that, one verse. 
lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we have hospitals, ambulances, police cars, prisons, fire departments, guns, and violence today. And Satan did not call out Chippendales for the woman. He didn't build a bar. He didn't have her smoking anything. One piece of fruit. And they didn't even finish it. Says she took the fruit, she did eat, and she gave off to her husband. Sounds like one piece of fruit. Okay, that's not it. Second Samuel. Second Samuel nineteen. Oh, we all know this story. Second Samuel nineteen two. Eleven two. Eleven two. See, Satan doesn't want us to find it. One verse. And I may stretch a little, but I don't have to. And it came to pass at even time David arose from off his bed. David's supposed to be in war, verse one. But that has nothing to do with the picture. Walked upon the roof of the king's house. Pride of life. I'm the king. See my palace? Jesus. See all the see all the kingdoms? Pride of life. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. David saw a center for a naked woman. Maybe naked, we don't know. Some people say she's naked, some don't. I don't know. It does not say so. This said she, she could have been washing her face. She could have been so pretty just washing her face. Maybe her boobs are, I don't know. But the eyes of David is, he saw her. And he took another look. And maybe more. Lust of the eyes, David, pornography. And David didn't have a computer. Hugh Hefner's long, long, he's never been on the picture yet. This is BC before cameras. I'm the king. Woohoo! Look at that. Satan's got the toolbox. It's open. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Oh, if I can only have her. David, what's your other wives? <laughs> You got a beautiful, wonderful, loving, kind, marvelous woman named Abigail. You know what gets me about this? Years and years and years and years and years and years and years down the road, and David's an old fart. And I understand now because I'm going to. I'm going to right now. I, 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 I'm freezing. My blood won't go no more. I freeze. I'm cold. And they saw a woman to lay with David, keep him warm. What happened to Bathsheba? She's there. She's going to show up in the picture about another day or so. What about the other wives? That lust of the flesh. And the thing is, it runs to the fact is, I got to get out of my parents' house and get an apartment. Okay, you got the apartment. 
You meet a woman, you marry her. Well, we got to buy a house. Well, yeah, you get yourself the house. Now you got to buy a camper to get away from the house that you bought in the payments. Now you got to buy, you got the camper, and you go camping, and you can't. Because you got to work extra hours to pay for the house, and now pay for the camper you can't afford. Now you got to buy a boat to get away from the camper that you bought to get away from the house that you wanted to get out of. The apartment that you were living in, if you want to get out of your mother's house. And it's not bad enough. Okay, you got the house, you got the camper, you got the boat. Now you're looking at your neighbor's car like, oh, I wish I had that. And check out the lawnmower he's got. And the law prescribes a big tent. Thou shall not cover thy neighbor's ass, his, his, his sheep, his field, his, his wife. Whoa, look at his wife. She's out in the backyard laying right by the pool and sunbathing. Maybe even with no clothes on. Whoa. Hi, David. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get that diploma. I'm going to do things. Hi, Eve. I'm going to climb that corporate ladder and I'm going to get all the... Hi, Jesus. I just gave you Satan's three tools in Jesus and David's and Eve's life that could be in your life right now. Now, I'll tell you what, what all those tools have in common. They will take you away from God, away from serving God. I mean, how's that career going to do with, with your serving the Lord? Oh, you know, I'm going to have that big fancy red car. Woo, we have got the money. I can get the red car. Dad, check out the red car. Wow, it's great. It's got four on the floor in it. Uh, son? Yes, Dad? That's a nice car. Yeah, it's a special, one of those European sport models. Cool. You got yourself a nice wife? Yeah, she's beautiful. She loves you. Yeah. Got a good job? Yeah. She's praying they're going to have a baby. Where are you going to put that baby in that two seater? I'll tell you what, what America and the world will tell you run her down to the abortion clinic and get rid of that baby so you can keep the red car. I didn't think I would ever have to say that. I can't imagine what some of the things those babies are being aborted for because of lust of the flesh, the pride of life, or the lust of the eyes. One of the minor prophets said, Woe unto you that, that, that will give your beer to your neighbor there to uncover her nakedness. Now she's pregnant. Bathsheba. What did David do? He killed her husband. He didn't kill the baby. He killed her husband. Why? Lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and lust of the eyes. Go to prison. Listen, I've been in prison ministry eight years. Go and ask them. Don't tell them what you do. Just ask them. And you'll find the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and lust of the eyes. There's no other tool out there. The pride of life. Oh, the, the college out there. President Biden said, hey, you get that college and you don't even have to pay for it now. Oh. Lust of the eyes. Pornography. You don't need to buy the magazine no more. Just go to your computer. Major cities, they got topless places. Go live in a beach. A city's got a beach. Less of the flesh. Less of the eyes. You got advertisement. The less of the flesh, man, that can go anything. 
That could be gluttony. That could be anything. 